Hello, welcome to a new creature tutorial. So, have you ever wanted to share your creature animations with other people, other platforms on the web, for example? Well, this tutorial is going to cover just that. I'm going to teach you how to use the new Creature WebAssembly Accelerated widget to actually share your character animations online, like here. In fact, you can take a look at all the samples on the Creature website. There is now a new page which has real-time WebGL demos, and you can go through each of each and every of them to take a look at how they look like. Each of these samples are running in real-time using the new Creature WebGL widget that is accelerated with the WebAssembly module, so they're super fast. And also, they take in the Creature Pack file format, which means they're also really, really tiny. So you get high performance, high quality, and really tiny deliver, delivery file sizes, which is, you know, I think the perfect mix to share your portfolio online. So feel free to take a look at all the samples that you see on the demo page. And before I jump in, I'm going to go through a bit of behind the scenes about the tech, the technology that's powering this new creature animation WebGL widget and how you're going to use it, right? So I'm going to jump into the to some discussion about the tech because I think you find it rather interesting. Okay, but in the meantime, you can take a look at some of the really, really cool samples on the demo page as I scroll, scroll through them. So I hope you enjoy them. Okay, so the actual WebGL widget is powered by WebAssembly, which is this new technology, this new web framework that allows us to compile native code, native C++ code and deploy it on the web. That's the underlying backend of the Creature Animation Web Player. And to showcase how powerful this is, this is a, an example of the Creature Animation WebGL widget running in real time with 200 real time mesh deforming dinosaurs. There's 200 of them right here. And it, as you can see, the frame rate is capped at a very, very reasonable 60 frames per second. It's maxed out and there's, um, there's basically no lag, right? This is how performant it is. And and also, as I said before, it's all running using Creature Pack. So not only is it high performance, high quality, it's also super compact in size. It's perfect for web delivery platforms. Okay. And I have actually a full write up on the whole process of why I went through doing this because I wanted to deliver the best experience for Creature, the users of Creature. You know, if you want to share your animations, you care about quality, you care about performance, but ultimately, if you're sharing on a web, you also care about size. There's some really interesting statistics on the Medium blog post I, I, I put up. I encourage you to read it if you're interested. And as you can see, it runs extremely well, even on a Sony Android Xperia phone. And this is an Xperia phone. You can get 35 to 45 frame per, frames per second for 200 real-time deforming dinosaurs. I think that's quite impressive. And on low-end laptops like the MacBook Air, you're at 60 FPS, basically, okay? Uh, 200 dinosaurs is 360,000 points, and each dinosaur mesh has 1,800 points. So you can, you can see how performant it is. Now, what's really cool about this whole thing is that WebAssembly allows you to compile C++, as I said, natively, or rather into a LVM bytecode and deploy on the web. And I'm a C++ person. I really love native code. I believe this is the future. And it allows you to combine, you know, compile native code with, with JavaScript. So you get the best of both worlds, right? So again, I would encourage you to take a look at the demos, take a look at the different creature pack demos, and just enjoy what's possible with this technology today. And this technology is available for all creature users. It's actually on GitHub right now. I've already checked in all the latest WebGL WebAssembly runtimes. So you just go in there, this, it, go to the link on the, the, the GitHub WebGL link, and then you go into the WebAssembly folder, and there are instructions on how to deploy it, which is I, what I'm going to go through next. Okay, so let's start talking about how to actually share your new creature animations online using the new Creature Pack Accelerated WebAssembly module. Okay, so let's head over to the Creature WebGL Runtimes page. And the first thing you're going to do is either grab or clone this GitHub repository because it's going to contain all the files you need to actually share and load up the Creature WebAssembly WebGL widget. 
Okay, so on the Creature Runtimes GitHub page, you can see a description of the various demos, samples, and what it has. And in particular, there is the part where it says how to share your animations easily with the Creature Pack Web Assembly widget. Now, it's based off the very, very powerful Babylon JS 3D WebGL engine, which actually means that when you share your characters, you have the option of actually turning on soft shadows, which even though it's a 2D character, will give a lot of depth and feel to your character. These are real-time soft shadows, so I'm sure you appreciate that as well. So first things first, head over into the WebAssembly folder. As all the files you need. It seems a bit overwhelming, but don't worry because there aren't really that many files to copy over and it's all described in the README. Right, so I'm going to actually take you down a sort of a, a how-to on how to deploy and share animations. So this will be a sort of a coding exercise today. Now, after you grab the repository, make sure you copy the following files. So there's a couple of JavaScript files here to copy. These are the core Babylon.js libraries. And then there's a bunch of JS files that contain that contain the libraries and the, the WASM or WebAssembly binaries for the widget itself. Okay, so I have conveniently copied them over into this directory from the cloned or, or downloaded uh, WebGL runtime GitHub page, right? So here they are. In fact, I'm going to load up my favorite text editor. You can use whatever you want, but I love using Visual Studio Code. I highly recommend it. And this has all the files. Now, again, it's actually not that overwhelming. Today, we're going to actually load up a the horseman, horseman, the funny cartoon horseman animation, and, and basically put it on a web page. That's what we're going to do today. That's the ex exercise today. You'll see in a moment, it's super simple. Right? And so we're going to be working in this HTML page called Creature Player Widget Test.html. It's already set up for you, but I'm going to go through the code with you line by line so you know exactly what's going on. Now, before we continue, I think it's important to note that when you actually do any web development, if you're not familiar with it, the first thing you need to do is to realize that you need to actually host or start a web server when you're doing local development. It's actually not that complicated. The first thing you need to do is that you need to install Python. And if you haven't installed Python on your system, I highly recommend it. Why? That's because I've actually added a very handy script called webservertest.py, which basically is a little Python web server I've written for you. So all you need to do is to install Python on your system. Please look it up if you're on Windows, Linux, or Mac you can just Google, you know, Python install for your operating system and it will take you to the required installer to install it on your system. Now, please install the right version of Python. I believe what I'm supporting is the Python 2.x series, the, the version 2 series. But once you've installed it, all you need to do is go into the directory with the GitHub repositories files and make sure you copy over the file called webservertest.py. I've actually written that for you. And to start the web server, before you do any development, start the web server using the Python command line. Press enter and that starts it. Okay, that's all you need to do. Super simple. With that, we can actually start doing web development and actually starting the widget. Okay, so let's get back to the widget, right? Let's look at the creature player widget test.html. Now, the first thing you need to do is to actually include in all the required libraries of the widget. You include the, the Babylon.js libraries and then some of the Creature Pack WebAssembly libraries. So these are the full list of libraries you need to include. You don't actually have to remember what those are because they're actually listed directly on the website, on the GitHub readme. So just copy and paste. Everybody loves that. Super simple. Copy, paste, and you are done. The next thing you want to do is to actually define your rendering canvas. Now, this is the canvas that is going to fit your creature character animation. This is where you're going to share your character animation. So again, this is just standard HTML. Please look up the documentation on how to define you know, your canvas elements. But you can basically determine the size of the canvas and so on, just based on different properties of the canvas. 
once you are done, you actually define and put the canvas on your web page like so. So we defined it as render canvas. Yeah. So it, it had an idea of render canvas. So we basically insert that canvas onto our web page. And that's it. That's all we need to do. So you can see in the actual creature, the HTML uh, web, web widget test, we have it here as well. That's all. Now, finally, and finally, we actually load our widget. And that's that's it. That's all you need to do. Super, super, super simple. Finally, you load the widget, right? And the widget is called Creature Player Widget, very aptly named. And the only real things you care about, to be honest, are these two lines here. The first line is your Creature Pack, which is the Creature Pack file format you export it from Creature using Game Engine Export. If you're not familiar with Creature Pack or how to do Game Engine Export, I would advise you to go watch some previous tutorials where I cover the full scope of Game Engine Exports. It's actually, again, super simple because you only really care about one file. It's called Creature Pack, and that file is always exported in your Game Engine Export directory. There are some additional options to tweak, compress using fancy, the new fancy Delta compression options to make your file size super tiny. Again, I advise you to go watch those tutorials. So define your creature pack file and define your character atlas. This is the PNG file of your character. And that too is exported along with the creature pack in the same folder. So they're all conveniently placed. Copy those over onto your website or your local directory for testing. That's all you need to do. And again, this is all documented online on the GitHub GitHub readme. Now there are additional options, additional options here that you can read through to see what you have. You can turn on the player, turn off the player, enable, disable shadows, move the character around and all that. That's all those are all options in a widget. So it's super convenient to use. Okay, but with, with that, let's actually see how our widget looks like. So to go there, you would actually go to a local address. It'll be 127.0.0.1 with a port of 8887. Okay, this is a standard local port for local web server testing. So press enter and it'll list out all the files in that directory. Now this only works, I want to emphasize, this only works because we have started the web server. Okay, that's why I emphasized, make sure you have installed Python on your system so you can conveniently run the web server I've written for you. And once you have that, you have all the files listed and we want to load that creature play widget test.html. So click on it and see what you get. Okay, so once you clicked on it, you will see our character loaded on screen. And if you press play, you'll see the character playing. It's pretty cool, right? Now, this character is full screen right now. As, as I told you before, you can go back to the HTML and change the size of the canvas to say 50%. Let's see what we get. Let's go back and reload the page. And now it's 50% the size and so, and so on, right? So this is, this is basically just tweaking at this point. This is pure HTML. If you're not familiar with HTML, I would recommend you learn more about it at, you know, say uh, HTML online documentation, but you can basically place this canvas, this render widget, wherever you want, embed it in your web page and you're off to go. That's all. And so you can see, this is pretty cool. You get these shadows for free, right? They are real time sh soft shadows of your character. You can turn them on off if you don't want it either. You can change the background color. You can remove the ground plane. It's actually all up to you, but these come in as, as default options just to make your character, I think, look a bit better. But again, they are all com all completely optional. And the player itself is also optional, but the player allows you to actually switch between the different animations of your character if you want to. And again, you can change, you can programmatically make the character run animation if you want and remove this player interface too. Everything here is optional, as you can see. Now, crucially, you can tell that the performance is top notch. It's running off the accelerated WebAssembly module, so it's super, super fast. And that's really all it is. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I think it's, I hope it was very useful for you because now you can easily share your character animations with Creature online using this super fast, super performant widget. Hope you guys have fun and I hope you find this very, very useful. Thanks for watching.